Measure the position for group data. Under this topic, we will learn how to determine the measure of position for group data in terms of quartile, decile, and percentile. So when we say group data, these are scores or data that are placed or clustered in the so-called frequency distribution table. Take note, frequency distribution table varies depending on what data that you do need. So in this case, there are a couple information that must be present on our frequency distribution table, such as LV, our N, our CF, our F, and our I. So what's the meaning of these representations? So LB means lower boundary. N means total frequency. CF, commutative frequency. For F, frequency. I, meaning class interval. And K, representing the N class or the N position that we are asked to look for. For example, find the upper quartile of the given set of scores in a group data. So before we start, dealing with the formula. So let us let me first explain a couple parts of information that we do have here on our so-called frequency distribution table. So aside from the frequencies, so our lower boundaries value or data came from simply on this part of our class interval score subtracting by 0.5. So 46 minus 0 0.5, so that's why we do have here 45.5. So 41 minus 0 0.5, so that's why we do have here 40.5 and so on. For the cumulative frequency or less than cumulative frequency, <coughs> so it starts from here. So from the frequency that we do have here, so starting from the lowest part, so here we do have 6. So we copy it, so we do have here 6. So the next thing, the reason why we do have here 18 is because we add 6 to 12. So 6 plus 12, that's why we do have here 18. 18 added to 9, so that's why we do have here 27 added to 11, so that's why we do have here 38, adding to 8, so that's why we do have here 46, then add 4, that's why we do have here 50. So that is the reason why we do have this data on our community frequency. So now, let us start how to determine the measures of position in quartile 3. So from this data that we do have here, since we are asked to look for quartile, so we are to use the formula for quartile, and that is Q sub K equals LV, plus quantity k times n divided by 4 minus less than community frequency divided by frequency of the quartile class class or times class interval. So take note that we here we do have here divided by 4 because we are talking about quartile. Okay. So our formula requires lower boundary. And based on our table, we do have here lots of lower boundaries. So which of these lower boundaries are we going to use? Same thing goes with the cumulative frequencies. We do have here lots of cumulative frequencies we do have lots of frequencies here. So which of these scores or data are we going to use? So for us to know, first thing is we will set a date, a point of reference that we will use or to extract and be substituted to our formula. So the first step is we determine the location or set a point of reference. And how? So we just simply use this part of the formula for us to determine to where are we going to get the data for the quartile tree. So, since we are asked to look for quartile 3, so our k becomes 3 here. So, this becomes 3. Our n means the total frequency and our n base on the table is said to be 50. Now, the, rewriting it properly, so we do have here quartile 3 equals 3 times 50 divided by 4. So, 50 times 3, so that gives us 150. Then, dividing 150 by 4, so quartile 3 is 37.5. So, this value that we got will be located on the cumulative frequency and we will be tracing to which number covers 37.5 so it exceeds 6 so not 6 not on this area not even 18 because it is higher than 18 so 37.5 is also higher than 27 so the one that covers 37.5 is this area which is the number 38 so this will be our point of reference to substitute on our formula so let us now proceed in substitute substituting. So take note that our quarter 3 is 37.5 which is on this location. So substituting the data that we do have here first is our lower boundary and our lower boundary is here. So our lower boundary on this area is 35.5. So this becomes 35.5. 
Then on this part of the formula, something that we already solved on our first procedure. So it is 37.5. So no need to recompute it. Next one is minus commutative frequency before. So here's our commutative frequency, which is this value. But it is indicated to be before. So we will be using the value before. So it is not 38, we will be using 27. Then divided by frequency of the quartile class, the frequency that we do have here is 11. So therefore, this becomes 11. Then times class interval. So class interval is based on the interval of the numbers that we do have here. So here we do have 50 becoming 45 becoming 40. So the interval is 5 because 50 minus 45 is 5 or 45 minus 40 is 5. Okay. So next thing, so let us rewrite our data. So we do have quartile 3 is equal to 35.5 plus 37.5 minus 27 divided by 11 times 5. So let us simplify it step by step first. We simplify the terms inside the quantity, specifically the numerator part. So 37.5 minus 27, so that gives us 10.5. Next thing, we divide 10.5 by 11. So using just only two decimal places. That gives us 0 0.95. Next thing, we multiply that value to number 5. So 0 0.95 times 5 giving us 4.75. Then adding these two values, 35.5, therefore quartile 3 is equal to 40.25. So what does this mean? So this simply means that, therefore, 75% of the scores is less than or equal to 40.25. So probably you are wondering... Where did this 75% came from? Since we're talking about quartile 3, so it is simple as having 3. Since we're talking about quartile, so it is divided by 4. So dividing 3 by 4, so that gives us 0 0.75. And we just simply convert it into percent. So to convert into percent, we just multiply it to 100. So 0 0.75 times 100, so that gives us 75. So 75%, so that is why we have 75% of the scores is less than or equal to 40.25. So 40.25 is the value that we got on our computation, so which is this one. Okay, so that is how we determine the measures of position in terms of quartile. So let's have another one. Okay, so this time let us deal with decile. So find the second decile. Again, so decile, so this time, there will be a, couple, a simple adjustment on our formula. This time, our denominator is 10. So just like what we did on the first example, so for us to determine or to, the, to have the values properly, so first we set a point of reference, and that is present on this area again. So the difference, we are dealing now with divided by 10. So here we do have decile class is equal to k times n over 10. So, replacing our k, so since we're asked to look for the second decile, so our k becomes 2. Our n remains 50. So, rewriting it properly, so we do have here decile 2 is equal to 2 times 50 divided by 100. So, multiplying 50 to 2, so that gives us 100 divided by 10. Therefore, decile 2 is equal to 10. Again, the value that we got on the first solution is to be located on the commutative frequency so that the one that covers the value that we got so it is exceed 6 so the one that covers 10 is 18 so this is the correct number so this is the correct area to where we can find the value of decile 2 so this will be our point of reference to substitute to the formula that we do have so let's start substituting now so based on our point of reference our lower boundary's value, so here is our lower boundary, and the value is set to be 25.5. Last quantity kn over 10, so something that we already computed earlier, so we already have the value of 10. Minus less than, so if this is our commutative frequency, which is 18, but we are asked to use before, so before 18, so we will be using 6. Then divided by the frequency, again this is our frequency, the frequency on our point of reference is said to be 12, so divided by 12. Times class interval, so again, based on our sequencing of the numbers, so the interval is said to be 5. So rewriting it properly, so we do have decile 2 is equal to 25.5 plus 10 minus 6 
divided by 12 times 5. Simplifying the numerator, 10 minus 6 giving us 4. Then after simplifying it, we divide 4 by 12. So approximately, that gives us 0 0.33. Then multiplying that 0 0.33 to 5. So we do have here 25.5 plus 1.65. Then combining these two, therefore decile 2 is 27.15. So it simply means that 20% of the scores is less than or equal to 27.15. Again, for the record, so where did that 20% came from? Since we're talking about decile, so therefore we do have here 2 divided by 10 because we're talking about decile. So 2 divided by 10 is 0 0.2. So, to convert this into percent, so we multiply it to 100. So, that's why we do have there 20. So, 20% 20 of the scores is less than or equal to 27.15. So, that is how simple we determine the, the so-called second decile or decile test. Let's have this time the third one. Let us try to see how to solve for the percentile. So, for the percentile, so we do have here percentile class is equal to the lower boundary plus KN divided by 100. So, because we're talking about percentile, so over 100 minus cumulative frequency before divided by frequency of the percentile class times class interval. Step 1, we set the location or point of reference to where we are going to use to substitute on our formula. So, of course, we are to use this area. So, KN over 100. So, our K here becomes 54. Since we're talking about percentile 54, or we are asked to look for percentile 54, and our N remains 50. N means total frequency, and the total frequency that we do have here is 50. We're writing it properly. So percentile 54 is equal to 54 times 50 divided by 100. So simplifying this 50 times 54, giving us 2,700, then dividing it by 100, therefore percentile 54 is equal to 27. Again, the first value that we got on our computation is to be located on the commutative frequency. The value that covers it is, so it is not 6, it exceeds 6, it is more than 6, it is more than 18. Okay, so it is here, it is exactly 27. So therefore, this will be our area or point of reference that we will use for our substitution process. So let us now proceed. Our K, so our lower boundary first, based on our point of reference, is said to be 30.5. So our lower boundary is 30.5. Next, so our KN over 100 already solved on our first solution, on our first process. So we do have here 27. Less than community frequency or community frequency is here. So, we do have there 27, but we are asked to use before. So, what is before of 27 is the number 18. So, we do have here minus 18. Then, divided by the frequency. So, the frequency is here. So, the frequency of the percentile class that we are looking is said to be 9. Pass interval, just like the previous example, is 5 in this case. So, rewriting it properly, so we do have 30.5 plus 27 minus 18 divided by 9 times 5. Simplifying the terms inside the quantity, specifically the numerator part first, 27 minus 18, so giving us 9. Then, 9 divided by 9, so that gives us 1. And that 1 be multiplied to 5, so 1 times 5 is 5. Then, adding these two, so 30.5 plus 5, so the answer is 35.5, meaning... There are, therefore, 54% of the scores is less than or equal to 35.5. Again, for the record, so where did they get that 54%? So, since we're talking about percentile 54, so we do have 54 there. Percentile, so it is divided by 100. So, giving us 0 0.54 to convert it into percent, we multiply it to 100. So... That gives us 54. That's why we dubbed their 54% of the scores is less than or equal to 35.5. Okay, so hope you understand now how to compute for the measures of opposition in group data. So the process is quite long, but it is not difficult. It is only a matter of following the step-by-step -step process. Okay, so thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. See you next time.